Okay, welcome everybody. We actually have surprisingly many people. So that's very pleasant to see. Uh, so we'll be talking today with Tarun uh, a bit about how you can increase the efficiency of your tempering process uh, by using modern tools that, tools that are available out there. Uh, so first I'll be discussing a bit about what is quality. How quality is often seen on the market, how we would like to see uh, quality more and more when we go into these discussions. Uh, then a bit about the benefits of these kind of online reporting and online quality measurement systems. And after that, moving to how we want to move towards automated and optimized processing. And uh, then in the end, before Tarun comes to the stage, uh, a few words about how we see that, what kind of KPIs are out there, how you could measure your production. And Tarun will be telling then a bit about production development at Viridian, uh, what kind of smart manufacturing tools they have in place, and more imp uh, most importantly, going into detail that how do, how do they see production development? What's important for them? What kind of KPIs and tools they use? So if we think about quality, uh, this kind of online quality measurement tools <coughs> are becoming more and more common on the market. Uh, most obvious ones are for your roller waves and edge lifts. Uh, then again and again you see more and more anisotropy devices, devices to measure your scratches, white haze. So lots of different opportunities out there to measure your quality. And uh, of course the obvious benefit uh, of these are that you can set limits and you can monitor all the products that you are actually producing. And when we go into discussion that what is quality, we quite often revolve around one of these devices. And actually one of the most common comments that come from this that we have good quality if our roller wave is less than 0 0.076 millimeters. Anything else is bad quality. And as a starting point, this is actually quite an okay, okay place to start. But if you want to have a bit broader view, uh, you want, want to take a bit bit wider view on the topic. And I'll be discussing also a bit later that why, why it's very important to understand that you have to set these limits, but you also have to understand that they go a bit case by case. And how we like to define quality is that your product will be good quality when it's passing the needs <coughs> and expectations of your own customer. And this means that there is not one quality limit that you can set that will tell you whether your quality is okay or not. Usually you've got different types of customers who will require di different types of things. And this is what you really need to take into account. And if we think about what quality is, so normally we are focusing around this uh, cost of producing poor quality. And that's pretty natural because that's what you see more easily. And uh, now if we divide cost of producing poor quality into internal failure costs and external failure costs. So your internal costs are your uh, delays, remakes you need to make due to noticing during your own production that okay, now something is wrong, I have to remake this product. And this is still, of course, it costs you money, but it's still relatively inexpensive. Uh, the most expensive part are the external failure costs. And these are when you have already delivered the glasses, installed them to a site, and then your customer notifies you that, okay, now you have to redo the whole project. And that's what's really going to make you lose money. And why these online quality measurement tools have become so popular is that you can basically take this part out. So they are sort of an insurance uh, against these external costs. Uh, of course, you will start to see more and more in internal costs, but it's still going to be much, much more cheaper than having to pay huge amounts of money for redoing a facade, for example. Uh, the other side that's not considered as often is the cost of producing good quality. And this can be divided to appraisal costs and prevention costs. So appraisal costs are your auditing costs, different kinds of registration costs <coughs> that you need to have uh, and prevention costs are related to what kind of money you are uh, paying to make the quality that you are making. 
So you've got your investments in process capability, meaning how much you're paying for your machinery, how much you're investing to maintenance, uh, how much you're investing to ensure that your, your quality is consistent. Quite often, if you want to optimize your quality, you're sacrificing capacity, often also energy consumption. So you're using more money to make better quality. Then you've got your quality measurement tools, calibration costs, a lot of things around this topic. And if we think about where you want to be, and now for this you really need to understand your own production, you need to understand where your costs are coming from. So the more failures you have, of course, the more failure costs you're going to have. And when you're having less failures, uh, your failure costs go down. But then on the other hand, at that point, your prevention costs start to go up quite rapidly. And once you understand both of these, you're able to define that, okay, how much I'm actually paying to make quality. And then in the end, it's all about understanding that I want to be where these two curves are intersection, intersecting. And for, for being able to optimize this, you really need to have data about your production. You really need to understand what my costs are, how much I'm paying for my raw material, manpower, energy maintenance, how much I'm investing in, in making the quality. And now understanding these are not as simple as it would seem. So you need to have a lot of data. You need to have a lot of things that you measure in order to being able to get the full picture. And from KPI point of view, there are a lot of things that you can measure. Here are just a couple of examples. Quite often they are related to capacity, production efficiency, energy consumption, optical quality. And there are more and more of these that you can measure. And doing all of this measurement manually is usually a huge task. And uh, that's why, let's say, for the past four or five years, our approach uh, to developing automated lines has, has been that uh, we are connected, connecting all of our lines to, to a cloud system. We're collecting a huge amount of data from these lines and learning from that. And uh, now we, we use the data in our own activities to understand how the tempering process works. But at the same time, we are able to visualize the production to our actual customers. So they are able to see how our machine is running, and we are able to transfer the data into meaningful information. That's easy to follow up, easy to see, OK, last week was quite OK. This week, something went wrong, and I have to correct it. And what's interesting about all of these KPIs that you can use is that most, most of the time, no matter what you're producing, you need to understand this. But you also really need to understand what you're producing in order to really emphasize what's important for me. So this is just an illustration what the world might look like. But if you're doing shower doors, if you're doing facades, you're really emphasizing different things. So for a facet manufacturer, uh, distortion, anisotropy values might be the most important thing. And you're willing to sacrifice your capacity, your energy consumption, in order to really optimize production from this point of view. On the other hand, if you're making shower doors, it really doesn't make any sense to start running shorter loads to get better anisotropy. And really understanding how you want to balance, things, balance these things out is the key. And for that, you really need to understand, of course, your own production as well as your own customers so that you don't end up ruining your quality from their perspective. So now before Tarun comes to tell his view, uh, all of the glass processors in the audience, think about how you are actually managing your production. What are the most important KPIs that you are using? And then, most importantly, how you actually monitor them. Do you have a system in place that can provide you this kind of information automatically? Or is it a completely manual system uh, that you need to use in, in order to get at least some kind of understanding of your production? Now I will give the stage to Tarun 
who will tell how how you at Viridian approach these things. Thank you, Riku. Uh, good morning, all. So, um, uh, with Viridian, we started the similar journey as well. So we were kind of doing everything manually initially, and before implementing any of the KPIs, there's like a couple of things you need to answer yourself. Um, like, uh, what is the motive? What are you trying to achieve um, with your analysis? Obviously, analysis helps you in, um, you know, helps human in making the good decisions. Uh, but when it comes to KPIs, yes, it needs to be in a presentable format as well. So. Uh, w when we look at the journey, like how the first question is like, what is your objective? So what are you trying to achieve with your reports when you with your KPIs? And when you have that, then you need to see what are the sources because uh, a lot of times it's the data is not coming from a single source. It's coming from production data or from sales or all different things and you need to grab all everything in like a, in a single um, reporting layer uh, and that's where you um, so when you have the data and it's always like in a in a big format you always need to uh, it's a raw data needs to be cleaned up properly so you don't want your reports to be look like a big excel file so um, you want in a presentable format and uh, where you can see it very quickly and a quick decisions can be made out of it. Um, then uh, once your data is cleaned up, then you're doing your analysis and then you're asking the, the questions like uh, based on what were your objectives, what are you achieving it or not, and, and then drawing the conclusion out of it. So it's pretty much um, the, the, the five questions journey you have to prepare yourself before presenting any of the reporting format. Um, when it comes to the furnace, it's, uh, with other machineries, it's, uh, it's kind of easier where because it's, uh, like, uh, it's kind of uh, one kind of report you are looking for. But when it comes to furnace, it's like really complex because uh, if you look at the different KPIs, key performance indicators uh, from the furnace point of view, uh, you're looking at uh, how much loads uh, how much tons of glass you need to produce on a daily basis, weekly or monthly basis, uh, you can, and what is your product mix looks like, so by glass type or by thickness, and then also how much of loads you're doing per day, like, and you need to measure your, you know, bed utilizers, uh, how good your utilization of the furnace is, um, even by thickness as well, and what is your production uptime, you, you don't want to be waiting on glass so your furnace is running on the same recipe but the glass is not even ready in front of the furnace. So um, your, uh, your uptime, what's your uptime look like? And then your same thing, your machine idle time as well. So these are the, uh, you, when you have the production KPIs, but on the other side, you also want to see what's your energy utilization looks like. So um, how much energy you're using on the furnace and when you're using the energy, what is your energy utilization by um, the different glass types or different thickness of the glass as well? And what is your uh, heating and cooling energy you're using? So, it's, and as you can see, there's a lot of things, and it all comes from the different data source. And on top of there's a lot also quality control. So you can say like to to analyze all everything, you need to go in different direction and grab the data. And that's exactly what we started like a couple of years ago. We were trying to answer all these questions and uh, we were collecting data manually from different sources and then formatting it in a reporting format. Um, so while we were doing it, what we realized, like it, it was really time consuming because you have to manually load data every day, manually. Um, then you have to analyze uh, from different sources of information as well. And then it's, um, it's too much time consuming when while you're doing it, you just kind of lose your interest as well. So um, um, it's not really helpful. And on top, it's not real time. So by the time you're checking your reporting or KPIs, it's, it's all gone. So, uh, and on top, uh, when we have, uh, like um, in my company, we have 
different machines in the same factory or even different factories, um, then you want to analyze the like, furnace on this side to furnace on this city. So you need to see a proper utilization of your furnace across your business. Um, so that was uh, the, the big thing for us as well, where we couldn't analyze in one single platform. Um, so that's where we uh, switched to Glaston Insight program. So worked with Riku on um, designing what should be the uh, good KPIs for, especially from the furnace point of view. Um, so Glass Insight obviously it provides you, it has the processing of data and is integration of IT, manufacturing, and operational system to implement all the smart reporting in a single tool, and it allows us to uh, to have a real time analysis of, as well. Um, so this is what the reports looks like. So um, if I I quickly describe that like you you can clearly see you, you you have your bed utilization as well even by thickness and um, you you have your production per day and number of loads and you also get a lot of filters around it as well so on this one you can uh, you have a slider you can clearly see what dates date range I want to see my data for and you can quickly select I want to analyze for a month or I just want to see what's happening today or what happened yesterday. Um, and also, you have multiple machines in the business, then you can compare your different machines, how uh, the same machines are performing against each other. Um, so it's, it's like a, a healthy competition as well. So you're, you're checking um, what's happening in your business, why this one is producing more than the second one. So it's clearly just uh, answers very quick questions out of it. Um, so, yeah, th that was pretty good. And on top, um, not everybody, especially when it comes to people on the shop floor, it's important to share the information to even to the operator level as well. So it has a pretty good, like, uh, it has the, you can print the report. It gives you a nice PDF. Um, and just to give you or what are you trying to achieve. So um, based on your date selection, it tells you, okay, yeah, on the overview side, uh, what's your loads look like, and what's your load look like by glass thickness on a, if you're selecting only for a day, it can tell you for a day, but if for a month, um, it can tell you that, so, and what's your production looks like, so, what's your bed utilization by thickness, or your production by glass type per day, and um, for energy utilization as well, What's your energy consumption per day or energy consumption per thickness as well? So yeah, this is a lot of questions are uh, answered in really uh, quick scenarios. So um, one of the thing over here is like uh, uh, we were kind of trying to answer how much a low E glass compared to the float glass we are doing, and it's a quick button to check. Um, so if you look on the very top one, it tells you it's like. 15% of low E and 84% of um, float glass. This is one of the furnace where it will have a different scenario on the second machine. And if you want to compare the two, you can have why this side is doing more low E where compared to others. So it's, yeah, it's a pretty easy to answer a lot of questions in just one standard format. Uh, plus, uh, this is only the production side of things, and you then come to the quality as well. And I think Riku already explained um, why do we check the quality as well. So it's, it's like simple terms, uh, the quality cost is the cost of your poor production or poor services. Um, and it can add to other costs as well, like you have to do the design changes and your production downtime, and you have the maintenance as well, that you have uh, inspection and loss of sales. So uh, it's um, very important to kind of check the quality as well. Um, but it always comes with a, you know, with a cost. Quality always comes with a cost. So you always need to have a optimum level. Uh, Rick already explained that in the different graph. Um, it's a similar story. It's telling you that uh, you're obviously, if you want to improve your cost, uh, improve your quality, your cost of production will also go up. Um, Plus, also, if you're uh, not having a good quality, then your your revenue will be down as well. So you really need to achieve at an optimum level where you are 
uh, achieving a, a good quality product, which is within the tolerances level as well. Uh, and um, we kind of always uh, get like a feedback like, oh, well, I don't want to spend a lot of money on um, uh, implementing something to, you know, which is going to cost me in terms of checking my quality. So it's, uh, it's a lot of um, uh, people think that way as well. Um, we, we kind of train a lot of our sites on this uh, a simple format, like uh, there is always a prevention cost, there's always a correction cost, and most importantly, there's, uh, there's like a failure cost as well. So there's a, a simple rule, which is, you could call it, one is to 10 to 100. So it's like if you spend $1 on your prevention, it's going to save you $10 on your correction and further $100 on your failure cost as well. So this is the, the motto we try to achieve, especially with uh, designing our KPIs and checking uh, the quality of the product. And um, yeah, that's um, uh, in the last seven or eight months, we are using this tool and pretty happy. So um, yeah, um, going forward, I think its uh, future looks really bright. It's, it can really do a lot of good things as well. So thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, seems we are really heading towards uh, transparent factories. So that's yep. <laughs> interesting to, to see. Lots of data collected, and it's, it's good to, uh, examples here. Uh, by the way, in the afternoon, you can see that uh, there are some. Uh, w there's a lot of work spent now on uh, standardizing the interfaces to all machines, not only just the furnaces. Mm -hmm. So we will see much more of those things now. Uh, it's open for questions. Anyone uh, would like to take the opportunity to ask something? Is it still so early in the morning that it's difficult? <laughs> Uh, just one for me to uh, direction Glaston. I think you're using so many data here. Do you already have um, some ideas in place how you could use that for predictive maintenance? Bec I know that it's very difficult. I know from other experience that predictive maintenance, especially for grinding wheels, is more expensive than just having a spare grinding wheel. So it's always a cost balance. But how, mm -hmm. is this, how do you see it from Glaston's point of view? Well, I would say that there are a lot of opportunities on that front. and. Uh, we have been examining a lot of the data that we are collecting that how can we actually predict that something's going to happen. And for a tempering line point of view, if you're able to start predicting that, okay, for, for example, now your roller vib vibrations are too high or blower vibrations are too high, things like this. So those really can bring value. And those are definitely something that we are looking into and looking forward to bringing into the market quite soon. Okay. Uh, I think we, yeah, we are just in time to continue. So thank you very much. Uh, applause for these two gentlemen. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others. Since GPD is all about sharing and to receive more videos in future, Subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao.